Welcome back to TITV. The Tuscaloosa News is reporting that Jody Wright, a graduate assistant in the Alabama football program, uh, an offensive graduate assistant, was interviewed by the NCAA regarding the recruitment of Auburn quarterback Cam Newton. Why, you ask? Well, Wright worked as the football operations director at Mississippi State under Dan Mullen before coming to UA. Wright played high school football at nearby Pickens Academy for his dad, the legendary coach Lynn Wright, and he played collegiately at Jacksonville State. I'll bring Rodney Orr back in, and uh, I know a lot of people are trying to make a big deal about this, too. The NCAA mm -hmm. interviewing Jody Wright about the, the Auburn situation, but a standard procedure. He worked yeah. at Mississippi State. It's got nothing to do with Alabama. It's strictly uh, the NCAA in a fact-finding mode talking to a guy who headed up the football operations department at MSU. Yep. Well, and again, I, I'm sure that he may have some information he could have shared with them, but we heard about this last week that it was going to happen, so really not really that much of a surprise. And again, the fact that he was at Mississippi State when it happened uh, seems only natural. All right, now let's talk Iron Bowl, even though we'll talk it uh, much more next week, of course. But again, Cam Newton, there was some speculation that he might be held out of the Georgia game. He wasn't, so I see absolutely no reason in the world that they would hold him out of the Alabama game. Cam Newton is going to play. Oh, absolutely. So Alabama's got to find a way to defend him. And as we said, we will discuss uh, Cam Newton and Auburn much more next week. Now, news today from uh, the SEC in regards to Nick Fairley, the conference office uh, issuing a statement at the request of the media. Uh, Fairley had uh, had some questionable hits, to say the least, on Aaron Murray. Yes, he's had on a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, this guy plays with a nasty attitude. He uh, went into the knee of, of uh, Murray late in the game. He said, or Auburn people said he was blocked into to Murray and uh, knocked Murray out of the game earlier in that game, a, a vicious hit into the back with the helmet. But the, the SEC saying today that he will not be suspended. However, Rodney, two other Auburn players will be suspended for the Alabama game. Uh, Mike Blanc, a defensive tackle. Michael Goggins, a defensive end. Neither one starts, but they both play a lot. They were part of this fracas following the, the hit on Murray late in the Georgia game. Unfortunate incident, both through punches. And the rule is if you're ejected for fighting, you miss the first half of the next game. So even though they're not starters, they play quite a bit, and they'll be back for the second half, but it will impact the game a little bit, no doubt about it. Oh, there's no question about that, Gary. You're talking about guys that made a significant impact on the defensive line, and you know, you're talking about numbers. You're talking about depth. And again, I realize it's only the first half, but certainly it could have an effect. All right, we've got some callers that have been lining up to talk with us. First up tonight is Tim and Coleman. Tim, welcome into the program. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to comment on the way the guys played, and I really I really do think that, that's, that these guys could have been playing like this the whole year. And, well, uh, well Tim, just, yeah, that's a great point. And, I mean, anytime you've, you've got a team like Alabama that goes into the season as the number one team in, in the nation and also the fact that uh, – Many expected them to win the national championship, and you lose a couple of games. I think it's only normal. You're doing what everybody's doing. You play the what could have been game. Uh, this is a good football team, Tim. It's a really good football team, and they're close. I mean, you look at the South Carolina game. South Carolina played great. Garcia played a once-in-a-lifetime game. LSU played a terrific game. So it's not like Alabama's just, you know, I keep hearing people say, well, it's been a disappointing season. It's been a disappointing season, Rodney. We had this discussion based on the expectation level. But 8-2, and two, soon to be 9-2, and two, with a chance to beat Auburn to go to 10-2, and two, this could still really be a, a fine, fine Probably year. a great year, no question about it. You know, you're talking about coming off 12-2 and two and then 14-0 and, oh and follow that uh, that up with 11 and 2. And again, you can put that up against just about anybody in the country. And, you know, you talk about the season, Gary, and, and, and why they haven't been playing. There's been a lot of things that happened. Ingram obviously missed the first few games with his knee injury. Marcel Darius situation. A lot of those things sometimes they kind of impact you throughout the season. Then you had some injuries. You had the injury to uh, DJ Fluker, of course, though Alfred McCullough did play well. But again, the just things that kind of keep you out of rhythm. They never really kind of gotten that rhythm offensively. And, and hopefully, you know, we said this in the second half of Tennessee game, but hopefully I think uh, this, this game against uh, Mississippi State will help. All right, let's uh, stay in Tuscaloosa and talk with CB. CB, what's going on, my friend? Hello, gentlemen. How y'all tonight? Doing well. Uh, do you think y'all think we can uh, man up and we're going to have to put up some licks on this Auburn quarterback because, you know, he, he's the star of the show. We young, y'all think we can get to him and go and win this game? Oh, certainly Alabama's capable of beating Auburn. You look at what Alabama's done at home the last three seasons. I mean, it, you know, it's been impressive. Cam Newton, you're right. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. Rodney, I talked with you earlier today, and you know what a fan I am of Herschel Walker and the impact he had at Georgia. But I don't know that anybody has made a bigger impact on a college football team in his first season than Cam Newton has done at all. Oh, no question about it. He's incredible, incredible talent. But, you know, you're talking about – you know, the game against Alabama at Bryant-Denny Stadium, it's been how long since Alabama's lost at Bryant-Denny? 
last few years. And, uh, you know, let's be honest, some, Auburn's had some close games on the road, and I, it's going to be difficult for Auburn to come into Tuscaloosa and beat Alabama here at home. I, I, you know, Cam Newton, I, again, all due respect to him, but at the same time, he's never played in this kind of atmosphere. He's never played in an Iron Bowl. He has not, and he will. And CB's right about something else, though. Getting a lick on him is difficult. I mean, nobody seems to be able to, to hit this guy as good as Tebow was. You know, Tebow dished out some punishment, but he took some shots. Cam Newton has been able to elude those big hits, and uh, he's just really a special player, no doubt about it. Let's go to Dora and talk with Christopher. Christopher, welcome into Tyler Insider TV. What's going on, fellas? How are you? Doing good. Y'all looking sharp with y'all shirts on. Well, thank I you, like my, them. Thank you, my friend. Get by the locker room and get you one. I'm going to have to. All right, buddy. The question I had is, I noticed years ago when Peyton Manning was the quarterback at Tennessee and they'd get out the goal line and they'd just boot. hand it off to the running back and he would just go around with that bootleg. Yeah. I, I just sometimes think, I wish we would do that. Yeah, that's a good thought, Christopher. You, you, you know, bootleg uh, is, a, is a thought. It's a good uh, thought I remember that line. play well. Yeah. I remember in the 95 game when yeah. he did it. And uh, that's a good, good play, certainly. And who knows, maybe you'll see it in the next couple of ball games. All right, more of your phone calls and emails when we return here at Tider Insider TV. Back to the phones in just a moment, but first, time to talk about the locker room. You heard Christopher mention our elephant wear, original elephant wear available at the locker room earlier. Rodney, you went by today and you're sporting a brand new yeah, shirt. Especially looking, made. Looking sharp. Especially made, made for Rodney Orr. And they will hook you up at the locker room with original elephant wear, whether it's a shirt, tie, pants, Anything else? Of course, they got a great selection of all other menswear as well. That's the locker room on the University Strip. Been in business for 46 years. You can also look them up on the internet. You can even order online if you're from out of town. So uh, get in touch with Alex and Rush there at the locker room. Let them hook you up just like they do Roddy and I every week here on TITV. Okay, let's go back to the phones and talk with Tavares and Tuscaloosa. Tavares, what's going on, my friend? Tavares, you there? Uh, Tavares has hung up on us. Well, Alabama playing a BCS game. Uh, it's probably an outside shot uh, for that to happen. Uh, Alabama needs to win out. Obviously, some other people are probably going to have to lose. They're going to be in a good bowl game, make no mistake. But I'd say at this point, a BCS game is probably uh, just a yeah, just probably a slim chance. So, I think so. But again, you know, you never know. They should they win out, as you said, yeah. it's possible. That's the first thing you got to do is got to take care of business in the next two games. All right, uh, BT is with us. BT, how you doing? I'm doing fine, Gary and Rodney. How about you, Rodney? Doing well, doing well, BT. Uh, hey, Gary, when do you expect the injured still to be back, or they got a time limit? Right, BT, I really don't know. Uh, he was in street clothes again last night for the basketball game against Troy. I mean, it's just one of those things when he gets well. He, I, I do expect him to be back soon, but uh, Coach Grant has not really given us an update, and, you know, he'll be ready to play when he's ready to play. They're not going to rush him back. All right, let's take an email from uh, Brian. I understand Alfie Hill has decided to withdraw from East Carolina and try to get things lined up to enroll back at Bama. Do you have any info regarding this, Rodney? Well, let me tell you, Alfie Hill, a great uh, defensive end, outside linebacker type from up in the state of North Carolina, signed with Alabama last year, showed up, was ruled ineligible after he was here for about two weeks during fall camp. So he did leave. He transferred to East Carolina. And we broke the story on TiterInsider.com several weeks ago that, that Alfie had left East Carolina. He is planning on uh, transferring to Arizona Western Community College in January. We'll have to stay three semesters before he will transfer. Right now, Alfie says he's going to come back to Alabama when he finishes. So, you know, we'll see what happens. All right. Thanks for the phone calls. Thanks for the emails. Coming up, it's time to make our picks. As we often say with games like this, it's not a question of if Alabama will win, but by how much. Of course, we said that one year against the uh, yeah, University of Louisiana at Monroe and uh, came back to eat those words. But uh, feel safe this time that the Georgia State's not going to come in and win. But we'll make our predictions anyway next on the program. Stay with us. And we're back. Both Rodney and I 8-2 and two on the season in terms of our Alabama predictions. Rodney, uh, Georgia State under Bill Curry coming in here. And to give you an idea how much Bill Curry respects the University of Alabama, they're going to come in early tomorrow and tour the Bryant Museum. Oh. And uh, it'll be a nice, nice touch there. But And I think Coach Curry's done a good job there. But, you know, let's face it, they're out of their league. <laughs> I'd say... Uh, I mean, really, what else can you say about the game, Alabama versus Georgia State? Uh, 
Might as well just make the prediction 52 to nothing, Gary. Well, I think it's going to be a little closer than that. Yeah, right? yeah I'll tell you what. This game is going to go into the midway of the first quarter, I think, before it's uh, decided. 48 to 3. I like Alabama to roll over the uh, Panthers. But uh, I, I, I will say this. I mean, I do think Bill Curry has, is, is laying a foundation there. And I think in the years to come, they're going to have a decent program over there in Atlanta. Certainly got a good recruiting base. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Of course, next week we will be uh, talking Iron Bowl. It's dinner time. Tonight we're going to the Pottery Grill in North. Northport. Come by and see us if you like, and we'll have a replay of this show tonight at 10:35 on WVUA. It'll also be available at our website, WVUATV.com. So for Rodney Hoare, Rodney Hoare, John Huddleston, uh, Jonathan Newman, our entire TITV crew, I'm Gary Harris. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week.